Hey y'all, we are finally able to start gathering in bigger groups again and I cannot think of a better way to do that than an old school southern style fish fry. I'm frying catfish today and hush puppies. Let's get started. The very first step for hosting a fish fry at your house is to make sure you have all of the proper equipment. Proper equipment includes, you need a, a container of propane, you need a gas cooker with a line to hook up to an external propane tank. You can light these, they stay lit, they keep your oil hot. Set your pot down on your cooker and then you're going to want to go ahead and fill your pot with oil. This is the safest way to do this. You wanna fill it with oil before you ignite your flame. I want this to be deep fried, so this is a whole gallon for this size pot. Preheating my oil, opening up the propane. You can hear it, sticking it in. You can use this nozzle here to have more or less gas, and that helps you um, control your heat on your cooker. You wanna do this about over like medium high heat. Now that the oil is preheating, we need to mix up our batter for our fish. So for this batter, it is super simple, a classic cornmeal battered catfish fry is what we are going for today. The recipe calls to mix all of our ingredients in a bowl and then put it in a shallow dish to dredge the catfish, but I'm not about those dishes, so I am going to just go ahead and whisk up all of my batter ingredients in this shallow dish where I'm going to be battering my fish. So I have some cornmeal and some flour, also some salt, paprika, cayenne, and black pepper. Those are pretty standard catfish ingredients. You can really get crazy and flavor it any way you want to. Whisk it up really well in this shallow dish. I have my catfish. Now, this catfish I actually purchased from the fish store because I did not have so much luck catching them. My dad always told me that if I'm not catching any fish, I'm not holding my mouth the right way. So it's so hot today and I haven't had a whole lot of luck, but that's okay. So I'm going to run by my local fishmonger and pick up some locally farm-raised catfish. I have my fillets soaking in buttermilk. I would do this with the whole fish or fillets, really any fish. What this does, the catfish soaking in buttermilk, it kind of gets the fishy, weird, like bottom feeder taste out of the catfish and I will batter my fish when it is time to go in the fryer. But first, I am going to fry my french fries. The reason that I do this before I fry the fish is because I'm not a huge fan of french fries that have been fried in fish oil because it kind of tastes a little bit fishy. So I have my oven heated on a low temperature, about 200 degrees inside, and I am going to put them on a tray to keep them warm in the oven. It is time, the oil is hot. I'm going to drop my fries into the oil. I've got them on this tray. French fries in carefully. Once these are good and crisp, I will put them on a tray lined with a wire rack, keep them warm in the oven, and then we'll fry the fish and the hush puppies. These fries are golden and crisp, so I'm going to carefully lift them out of the oil and set them on this tray. And then over here, I can safely flip them onto my wire rack. Okay, now I'm gonna put these fries in the oven at a low temperature so they stay warm until my fish are ready. Okay, time for our fish. I am battering my fish, wet hand, dry hand. One hand is going in to grab the fish from the buttermilk. The other hand I'm gonna use to sprinkle and dredge my catfish to prevent batter from coating my fingers. It's still gonna coat them, but it's just less. I'm setting them over here on a parchment lined tray to go into the fryer. All righty, got my fish, 
Going to use some tongs to carefully drop it down in this hot oil. We're going at about 350 degrees. Just like French fries and like the hush puppies that will be fried later, you want to keep the fish moving around in the oil as they fry. It helps ensure that they are evenly cooked. My last batch of fish is coming out of the fryer. I am going to take these fish into my oven to keep them warm with my french fries and then we can get started on these hush puppies. It is hush puppy time. So for the hush puppies, I have all of my ingredients. I don't want to mess up my kitchen. I'm not making a mess. So I'm cooking everything outside today. Plus I just got this really amazing outdoor kitchen that Farmer Wayno helped me build. I am mixing together hush puppy ingredients. If you have never made hush puppies before, it is a classic side dish for fried fish. You have to have hush puppies when you're doing a fish fry period the end that's all on that so into my corn meal i am going to mix in some baking powder salt cayenne pepper flour and some minced onion i love a sweet onion in this you could also do jalapenos you could do cheese some people like sugar in theirs and i also tend to like sugar in mine um, i'm going to stir my this is some milk in with this batter and then one large egg so whisking this together dropping them in the hot oil here we go so this is what Wayno does he gets it he swirls it around in here he cleans the spoon and he comes back for more and drops it in but be careful why are they called hush puppies literally it's because they used to fry these things to keep dogs quiet while they were cooking because they fed dogs and dogs loved them. So hush puppy, eat this little corn ball and stop barking. One very important safety tip to note when you are deep frying really anything, but especially outside and you have this really big contraption, never, ever, ever pour water on a grease fire. You need to keep a fire extinguisher that is made for kitchen fires. It has a different chemical in it than a traditional fire extinguisher does. You could also, if you don't have a fire extinguisher made for kitchen fires, you could keep flour or baking soda on hand. Water will cause everything to explode with grease. So flour or baking soda or even a towel is what you should use to put out a grease fire, not water. That is a safety tip, so be sure to have one of those at least on hand on standby while you are frying. My last hush puppies are coming out of the grease, so it is time to get everything plated for my fried fish buffet. We have french fries, catfish, hush puppies, and you can't have a fish fry without coleslaw and pickles on the side. People are going to love this. It is a quintessential Southern gathering. And now that we can start getting people together, I just had to throw a fish fry because I haven't gotten to have people over here in a long time. And this is just the perfect way for me to do that. Our friends are on their way. So we're gonna get the table set for this fish fry. Everything is looking and smelling so good. I know they're gonna have so much fun. We are so excited to finally be able to host people again. I could not think of a better way to do it than a classic old school Southern style fish fry. If you throw your very first fish fry or you've done it a million times, I would love to read about it in the comments. If you liked this video, do all the social media things, like, comment, subscribe, share. If you're watching on YouTube, click that bell. He knows what to do. We will see you next time on Hey Y'all. Bye y'all. Cheers. Cheers.